The cat's knocked over my light again. As you can see, it is broken. Let's see how much light this makes. And they're off. These are bigger by like 10 inches. So maybe they'll produce more light. Wow. Those are much, much, much bigger. <laughs> oh well, they're not broken. This video is going to show you how to update your twerp recovery and install Cyan Jabon 9. One thing that I have noticed is that when you open up Goo Manager, which is the app that will install your custom recovery very easily, and you press menu, install open script recovery, press yes. And see, it says 220. That is not the latest version. You do not want to press yes. I'll have a link in the description where you can go to the Twerp website and download the image file manually. Then hook your phone up to your computer and transfer the .image file to your internal SD card. Or, on the computer you can put it in your Dropbox folder, go to your phone, and then download it using Dropbox if you don't have a computer available. Or the driver is installed. Then, you can go to the Play Store and download an app called Flash Image GUI. It's an app made by Joey Krim. He is an awesome developer that updates his apps quite often, supports new devices, and his tools are very, very useful, and it's only a dollar. If you can't afford a dollar, or you're too cheap to pay a dollar, you can just go to the SDX website that I'll link in the description, and he's hosting it on his own personal site for free. Press open. The first time you open it, it's gonna ask for root permission. After you press agree, Grant it or allow it, depending on which one you're using. In this latest version, he supported the Nexus 7, fixed bugs, and added boot.image support for the Nexus 7. This should pop up, letting you know what's new in each version, which is very nice. I like that. I hate it when apps update, and there's no way for you to find out what changed. See, in this one, it detects that we're using the Nexus S 4G, and it is supported. Right now, the Evo 4G LTE, Evo 3D, Evo 4G, Evo Shift, Vivid, Amaze, Optimus, Galaxy Nexus, Nexus 7, Nexus S 4G, Intercept, Transform, Moment, and Acclaim are all supported. The Epic 4G, the original one with keyboard, is partially supported. Since we're going to be flashing the recovery, we need to press the recovery. Do not press any of these. Just press Browse. I put it on the root directory of the internal SD card. We're going to scroll down here, and you'll see Open Script Recovery Twerp 2220. Press on it, and then press Flash Image. And here's the final sanity check to make sure you're not flashing the wrong file. Just press Yes. This doesn't take long at all. And now, if you choose Reboot to Recovery... Yeah, I know. I should have showed you that clockwork mod recovery before. I do not recommend clockwork. It is broken, unreliable, and I do not support it or recommend it. You should have 2220. I'm not going to link to just that specific dot image. I'm actually going to link to the page because the page will contain all the future updates. If this gets updated to like 230 or something, you'll of course want to install that instead of this. I'll link to the 2220.image where you can download it, you know, if you're watching this video from your phone, you can just download it instantly to your SD card, but I'll also link to the official page as well on top of that. And now from here, you can press wipe, factory reset, and then swipe it. If you're wanting to know how long all this takes, just pay attention to the clock that's on the phone. And of course, like always, you want to make sure that all the files are currently on your SD card before you do this. Just for the heck of it, I'm going to wipe the system as well. Go back. Go back. Press install. Go up a level. If you're in a different folder. And we're going to choose the CyanogenMod 9, Crespo, Image, and then we're going to swipe to Flash. This doesn't take very long at all. It's a, like a hundred and something megabyte file. It's not big. I totally keep freaking forgetting about the add more zips feature in Torp Recovery that you choose right before you swipe to confirm flash. You can actually add the Google add-ons on that screen and have both of those zips flash while you're in recovery without using Goo Manager. If you want to know how long it took, just look at the clock. It currently says it's 116, which it is. All right, we cannot reboot the system yet. If you press that, you will reboot the system and you'll find out that you do not have the Play Store, which used to be the Android Market, and you won't be able to install any apps. So we're going to press Home, 
We're going to choose install again. And then we're going to find the ICS Google add-ons. As of this video, 2012 04 29 is the latest one. I'll have links to all of these files in the description of this video. Flash. This takes almost no time at all. It's just like a little 49 megabyte file. When you're flashing the Jelly Bean Google add-ons, oh my goodness, that takes a lot longer. At this point, you can press Reboot to System. That is completely up to you, but I'm also going to show you the fact that you can easily install Ice Cream Sandwich or Jelly Bean. It's completely up to you. If you go to git.cm, you'll find CM9 and you'll find CM10. CM9 is completely stable and it's on version 9.1.0 as of this video. Sign my 10 on the other hand is a nightly. While most things work, you might find little bugs here and there. It's the same exact process with AOKP, CM9, and CM10. You put that ROM on your SD card, press on it, swipe to flash, and if you're running a Jelly Bean ROM, then you're gonna need the JB Google add-ons and I'll try to link to those as well. So flash those after you flash the ROM and reboot. Then you get to enjoy either Sinjima 9, Sinjima 10, or AOKP. All three of those ROMs are going to require either the ICS or Jelly Bean Google add-ons. Enough talking. Let's reboot the system. If you have Sinjima 10, you'll see a spinning logo that says Sign Engine. If you flash Sinjima 9, you'll have this one right here. If you flash AOKP, you'll have a little unicorn that pops up. After you first boot your device up, you can go to ROM control and you can disable the boot animation if you don't want to see a pink unicorn. At first I wanted to disable it, but after a while it grew on me and I kind of like the unicorn. AOKP is an awesome ROM and I currently have it on a couple of my devices. <laughs> the first boot up does take a while, trust me. It's going to take much longer than any other reboot. Well, installing an update would also if they come out with signs by 9.2 stable, all you have to do is reboot into recovery, install the update, and reboot. You don't have to reflash the Google add-ons, and you do not have to wipe. Now, if you're going from CM9 to CM10, or to AOKP, then you'll definitely need to do a factory reset. I chose not to sign into my Google account because this is not my device. We can open up the browser real quick. Oh, we gotta first log into Wi-Fi. Turn Wi-Fi on, press on it, and then you connect to whatever you have. This is the ice cream sandwich keyboard. All right, so we are now connected to Wi-Fi. We can open up the web browser again. In here, I can just type in titanium backup. Click on this first link right here. Zoom in, scroll down and press for download. Now it's down. Now it's downloading it. It's not going to let you install it right away. You're going to have to go to menu, security, unknown sources, and press OK. Now with that file is downloaded, we can press on it. If you didn't just do the security thing and allow unknown sources at this point, you will be able to press settings and enable unknown sources, but then it's inconvenient because once you press the back button, you've got to go back to your downloads folder and find the file that you downloaded. Press install. Now that it's done, we can press open and grant it root permission. Allow. I always just press ignore, keep the new ID. It's up to you and what you do. As you can tell, it saved all of our settings because when you go to menu, preferences, auto sync to any backup settings, it automatically puts a little special file in the folder that remembers all your settings. So that's pretty convenient. Of course, CyanogenMod doesn't come with any bloatware at all. And since I don't know my mom's login stuff, I can just press click edit filters, clear whatever's in there, accounts, and then press restore data only and now it's going to say reboot is recommended we'll just reboot it okay and now whenever the device reboots i'll be logged into her google account if you flash signs in my 10 and then you flash the jelly bean google add-ons you will have google now whenever you go to unlock it just swipe up and you can say like how tall is obama who's the current president what's the weather like where's the nearest taco bell and just ask it anything you want to ask it 
and it's in there. You can install Google Now on ICS, but it's not nearly as stable as if you use it on Stage Mod 10 and flash the Jelly Bean Google add-ons. See, now that we're rebooting, this won't take nearly as long as it did when we first installed the ROM. This is taking longer than normal. What is going on? I don't know what's going on. This is taking longer than normal. But again, this is Science by 9, completely stable, unlike Science by 10, which is not completely stable. So if you're going to be flashing this for your mom or someone that's going to go, Hey, my phone isn't working. It's just stuff you installed on here. You go, no, I installed a completely stable ROM. Oh, it just vibrated, so it means it's booting up soon. I restored system data, so that's probably why it's taking longer than normal. Now if I open up the Play Store, it should say it's upgrading, press continue, and then accept. Whoa, it backed up my Google account. Anyways, I had to sign into my Google account. I can go to menu, my apps, and then update my apps. I had to sign into my Google Play account. I need to put my mom's Twerp Recovery folder back on here that I put on my computer just in case it, because sometimes when you do a factory reset, I think it's with Clockwork Mod Recovery, it wipes your internal SD card. So make sure that you have everything backed up and safe. As you'll notice, all of our stuff is still on the internal SD card, so it's a hit or miss thing. I don't know the exact steps that cause you to have your internal SD card wiped. I'm pretty sure it's something with Clockwork Mod Recovery. When you do a factor reset, it also erases the internal SD card. Twerp Recovery 2220 will not do that, as you saw. But I highly recommend taking your Twerp backup and your Tessenium backup directory and keeping those backed up on a computer in case something does happen. You can just transfer back Back to your internal storage and you didn't lose anything this has been a video by what would josh do that's my username if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you're new to my channel please consider subscribing if you have any questions please leave them in the comments don't message me if you leave them in the comments i can reply to it as soon as i possibly can and everybody else can see your question and see my reply and then they won't have to ask that question it just helps everybody out i will reply to your comments as soon as i possibly can please give this video a thumbs up and please subscribe this is what would josh do in the mouth